Psychiatric health facilities are designed to help individuals suffering from mental illness, and while most of them today do exactly that, these facilities have a disturbing track record throughout history. Due to abuse of patients or simply lack of funding, many of them have been left abandoned. Let us take a tour of some of the creepiest abandoned asylums in this episode of Seriously Strange. On the mountaintop of Volterro in Tuscany, Italy, stands a structure that looks like something straight out of a horror movie. This building is the Psychiatric Hospital of Volterra. This hospital opened its doors in 1888 and was home to 6,000 patients. Like many psychiatric hospitals of its time, patients were subject to inhumane treatment, such as insulin-induced comas, ice baths, and scientific experimentation. In a time when the mentally ill were seen as less than human, many patients were used as lab rats for testing various medications and procedures. These experiments often left patients in worse condition, or even killed them. Volterra's most famous patient, Oreste Fernando Nanetti, marked his years at the asylum with strange graffiti all over the walls and grounds. Art experts believe these images to be insightful into the mind of a man, suffering both within his mind and from the abuse he was subjected to as part of his treatment. Though Nanetti spent most of his time in institutions, his time at Volterra is of particular note because while he seemed to improve in health and mind in other institutions, at Volterra he was depressed and his mental state only deteriorated. He spoke only to one nurse, and the images he scrawled on the walls of the hospital gave insight to the trauma he was experiencing. However, it was not the mistreatment of patients that caused Volterra to close its doors in 1978, but a new law implemented ordering the closure of all Italy's psychiatric hospitals and prohibiting mandatory psychiatric treatment. From 1924 to 1994, the Harlem Valley Psychiatric Center in Wingdale, New York, treated patients suffering from severe mental illnesses. Not just one building, the hospital is a massive complex comprised of 80 buildings and sits on 800 acres of land. It boasted its own bakery, bowling alley, ice cream parlor, dairy farm, and golf course. At its peak in the 1950s, the complex housed 5,000 patients and as many employees. However, it was in the 1930s when the hospital joined in the common practice of using the mentally ill for scientific experiments. Patients were subjected to insulin shock therapy, electroshock therapy, and lobotomies, which is a procedure in which a surgeon severs various neural channels in the brain, altering the patient's neural function. This was achieved by taking a tool, much like an ice pick, and pushing it past the eyeball and chiseling through the back of the eye socket to scrape away at the brain. This procedure was not intended to cure the patient, but instead put the patient in a permanent state of calm. What a lobotomy most often accomplished was rendering the individual in a vegetative state. Many patients lost the ability to speak, walk, or perform basic functions. By the 1960s, lack of funding and overcrowding in mental institutions across the country left many hospitals like Harlem Valley struggling to support their high patient populations. This lack of resources led to poor living conditions and abuse. One by one, different wings of the hospital complex began to shut down, leading to its eventual closure in 1994. The property is now being considered for renovation as a private Christian school. In 1874, during the Industrial Revolution, Danvers Lunatic Asylum was erected on the very site once inhabited by Judge John Hawthorne, the infamous judge who sentenced 20 people to their death 
during the Salem Witch Trials. This spot was known as Hawthorne Hill. Coming off the heels of years of religious persecution, governing authorities were keen to move away from the idea of demon possession and witchcraft and take a more scientific approach to what they deemed antisocial behavior, namely the mentally ill. Thomas S. Kirkbride, a doctor and founder of the American Psychiatric Association, was determined to create a system of mental health care that would be innovative in its design. Despite the asylum's dark beginning and its imposing gothic architecture, it is unique on our list for being hailed as a pioneer in humane treatment of the mentally disturbed, largely due to Kirkbride's efforts. Hospital administrators refused to use traditional methods of restraint and offered patients plenty of outdoor exercise. Even the shape of the building, consisting of one main center with four outstretched wings and being located in a scenic part of the country, was designed as such to be more cheery for its inhabitants. However, it too would later fall victim to budget cuts and overcrowding. By the 1930s, the hospital, which was designed to house no more than 450 patients, housed 2,000. The original policy of no restraints was left by the wayside, and patients became subject to dangerous lobotomies and straitjackets. The building itself began to crumble from lack of upkeep. Somehow, the hospital held on until finally closing in 1992. In 2005, the building was renovated and reopened as an apartment building. Many of the original structures were demolished during the renovation, leaving only two of the original wards intact. An unexplained fire halted further construction in 2007, but the building was open and ready to accept tenants by 2008. However, if you were planning to move into an apartment at what is now called Halstead Danvers, beware. According to some sources, the building has been reported to have severe structural damage and despite renovations, seems in a constant state of decay. Danvers Lunatic Asylum, with its foreboding gothic architecture, has been the inspiration for several works of fiction, as well as the filming location for movies such as Session 9, and is believed to be the inspiration for the well-known Arkham Asylum of the Batman comic books. In Weston, West Virginia, you'll find the Stone Masonry Building that was once Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. This is the hospital rumored to be the inspiration for the second season of the television show American Horror Story. Yet, the events that took place inside the walls of Allegheny were not of fiction. Like Danvers, it was designed under the Kirkbride plan, meaning it was intended to be a humane place for mentally ill patients to be treated and housed, as well as architectural designs meant to be therapeutic for inhabitants. Yet, also like Danvers, this dedication to the well-being of the patients would crumble just as the building itself. The grounds were intended to house no more than 250 patients. Originally named the Weston State Hospital and operating from 1864 to 1994, the asylum earned a reputation for violence. Patients were reported to have murdered other patients, even an attempted hanging by using bedsheets. When this failed to kill the patient, the attackers bludgeoned his head with the frame of a metal bed. The violence was likely caused by crowding and patients lashing out against the tortures they were forced to endure. Bodies of both patients and staff members would be occasionally found in various places throughout the building, including a nurse who had disappeared only to be found dead at the foot of a staircase two months later. Unruly patients were reported to have been locked in cages. A patient set fire to the building in 1935, destroying several men's wards. It is also worth noting that the hospital complex sits on 666 acres. Even though living conditions improved by the 1980s and new policies were enacted for more humane treatment of patients, Allegheny succumbed to closure in 1994. Now it stands as an attraction for haunted tours, as it is rumored that the spirits of the patients and staff who died there still very much remain.
During the tuberculosis outbreak at the turn of the 20th century, Waverly Hill Sanitarium originally opened in Louisville, Kentucky as a hospital for patients suffering from the White Plague. Patients admitted to the hospital were subjected to bizarre treatments for the disease, such as being left outdoors exposed to the elements, even in extreme weather conditions, and unnecessary surgical procedures. Some patients were exposed to ultraviolet light therapy using artificial light in place of sunlight in order to prevent the spread of disease within the lungs. In other cases, balloons would be inserted into the lungs and inflated. This practice was thought to aid the patient's breathing but was excruciatingly painful. If those treatments failed, a surgeon would remove several ribs from the patient's ribcage to allow the lungs to further expand. Thousands of patients didn't survive these treatments, causing the hospital to construct secret tunnels to usher out the bodies of the dead unobserved. However, as medical treatments for tuberculosis progressed, the number of patients declined in Waverly Hills, and Waverly Hills briefly closed in 1961. In 1962, the facility reopened as a hospice care center for the elderly. Rumors of patient abuse quickly began to spread, and many of the residents were left in worse condition than they were upon admittance. Dangerous electroshock treatments were allegedly administered to healthy patients along with other strange experiments. These allegations of abuse led to the hospital's closure in 1982. The fifth floor of the building is particularly infamous, as it is believed to be the area in which the most mentally disturbed patients were housed. It also housed a nurse's station and linen closets, but it is room 502 that is of particular interest. It is rumored that visitors or trespassers entering room 502 will see disturbing hallucinations or have the sudden urge to jump to their deaths through the fifth floor patio. Two of the former hospital's nurses are said to have committed suicide in this room. Waverly Hills is said to be one of the most haunted locations in America. Visitors have reported sightings of a ghostly hearse in the back of the building, hearkening back to the thousands of bodies carried away out of sight to secretly awaiting trains. Others report a woman with bleeding wrists, a small boy playing with a ball, a spectral young girl, and a ghostly cook that is often accompanied by the smell of food. If you are feeling brave, regular tours of the dilapidated building are available. That's all for now. YouTube has been demonetizing my content, making it very difficult to keep my show running. If you'd like to keep my show online and help to keep YouTube creepy, please check out the link to my Patreon below at patreon.com slash robdyke. There you will find a number of exclusive rewards for your help, and you will help to guarantee that Seriously Strange and all its sub-series remain online. So be sure to check out my link at patreon.com slash robdyke to help keep YouTube creepy. Thanks for listening. Now be sure to check out another video, and of course, subscribe to my channel now because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next time.